afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dovin, the moderator for this conference call. I thank everyone for joining us today for the Aircon International Limited Q3 and 9 month FY24 analyst conference call. At this moment, all participants are in listen only mode. Later, we will conduct a question and answer session. At that time, if you have a question, please press star and 1 on your telephone keypad. Today, we have with us the senior management represented by Srimati Ravini Advani, Director of Finance, Sri B. Muguntan, Chief Financial Officer and Executive Director of Finance, Sri Alin Roy Chaudhary, CGM Finance. I would like to remind you that some of the statements that will be made in today's discussion may be forward looking in nature. It is subject to several risks and uncertainties and the actual results could materially differ. I would now like to hand the conference over to Srimati Ragini Advani, Director of Finance, for the opening remarks, after which we will have the forum open for the interactive Q&A session. Thank you and over to you, madam. Thank you. Thank you, Dorvin. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Ragini Advani, Director of Finance at Con. On behalf of my team, I extend a warm welcome to all of you and thank you for your presence today at the Aircon earnings call for the third quarter and nine months period ended 31st December 2023. Uh, let me introduce you to my team today. I have with me Sri B. Mukundan, CFO and ED Finance, Sri Alan Roy Chaudhary, CGM Finance and Sri Sachin Gar, DGM Finance. As you are aware, in this quarter, DP Government of India has upgraded Aircon to Navrasma status on 12th October. With the grant of Navrasma status, the company will be able to undertake larger size CPT projects and there should be market credibility enhancement as well. We extend our heartfelt gratitude to all the stakeholders for their continuous and unwavering support. I am pleased to once again convey that we have been reaching greater heights quarter on quarter and recorded the highest ever third quarter turnover. We hope to continue this growth story of ours. Financial results as well as the presentation has already been uploaded on the stock exchanges and I am sure that all of you have had the opportunity to review the same. Let me take you through our financial performance of Q3FI24. The company has reported total revenue of 3012 crores, up by 24% as compared to rupees 2422 crores, same period last year. PAT has increased by 29% from rupees 190 crore in Q3 FY23 to rupees 245 crore in FY24, Q3 FY24. Core EBITDA has also increased to rupees 296 crore vis-a-vis -vis rupees 169 crore. Uh, it has increased uh, to 10.3% in Q3 FY24, an improvement of 304 bits over the last year. Earnings per share has gone up to rupees 2.60 per equity share, as against rupees 2 per equity share for the corresponding period in Q3 FY24. This is on a base value of rupees 2 per share. The order book of the company as at 31st December 2023 stood at rupees 29,436 crore, which includes 45% on nomination basis roughly and about 55% on competition basis. The split between domestic and international is 91% to 9%. Aircon has 11 subsidiaries currently, uh, mainly into roads, highways, projects and one in renewables and it has seven joint venture companies, again mainly into coal connectivity projects and roads and highways. Without taking much time, I would now like to open the floor for Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The 
first question is from the line of Sujit Jain from Bajaj Alliance Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity and uh, our compliments on a good set of numbers. Uh, I wanted to know uh, what is our scope uh, in terms of, uh, you know, project winning exit plan opportunity uh, in the India Middle East Europe corridor uh, and uh, is it taking shape? It has been spoken about uh, in GCC and even including in the recent budget, uh, but is there a traction in terms of, uh, you know, laying it out? Yeah, uh, thank you, Sujit, for the compliments on the result. As far as uh, this corridor is concerned, uh, we are also aware, as much as you are, uh, based on the announcements that were made in GCC and recently, uh, some activity is happening at a government level or at a ministry level, but uh, not something at which, you know, we would be aware at this stage. So we will not be able to comment on it any further till we get more details in it. Uh, but uh, just to understand in this, uh, which Indian entity would be uh, uh, at the forefront? Would it be RBNL or would it be ILCON or would it be some other railway entity? Nothing, nothing has been so far discussed in those lines. I think it's still at a preliminary stage. I don't think those discussions <coughs> have right now been done or deliberated. Sure. And I'm just to understand uh, the difference between us and uh, RBNL. Is it safe to understand that we engage in material sourcing and, you know, uh, management of overall contracts uh, as well? And so, therefore, our staff is uh, much higher than, uh, let's say, uh, uh, an RBNL. Yeah. So, the, our model is that we actually work like an EPC company. Therefore, we will do certain works in-house. We will have material procurement, design, and many other works that we like to do ourselves. And that is the reason we have that kind of staff strength or manpower available to us. Sure. And do we also eventually intend into get, getting into consulting business, which is more uh, uh, like a, a DPR, uh, viability, etc., which is mainly done by rights? Okay. So, there are two things. One, we offer a concept to commissioning to all our clients. Uh, two, we have a subsidiary called IISL, which does CMC as well as some of the initial consultancy work. Uh, but typically, uh, you know, where the consultancy work is alone, standalone, either we will have our IISL, the subsidiary to do to some extent, but we may not like to do that directly in our company if it's pure consultancy because then, you know, uh, a, a consultant versus uh, an EPC, there could be a conflict of interest going forward. So that is where we tend to prefer going into EPC role because that's where our strength is. But if it is a part of the overall uh, opportunity, then we are definitely also doing that. Yeah, and uh, uh, just to understand more about the relevant subsidies that you spoke about, uh, are there any asset uh, ownership businesses uh, residing in those subsidies? And what is our position there in terms of capital allocation? Uh, will we undertake, other will we not? Other than IISL, which is a project management consultancy company, essentially, yes, all our asset-owned companies, they all have assets. But these are long-term PCP assets that you have. And in the in the field of uh, railways or it is in uh, the field of other infrastructure? Yeah, so uh, our joint ventures are in railway connectivity projects. Our subsidiaries are mainly into roads and highways. There is sure. one which is in renewable and the rest are roads and highways. Sure. And in terms of more capital allocation to asset-owned projects, uh, what is our thought process? Yeah, so we'll continue to do that as well. And um, uh, if you see that, uh, you know, we started with some two or three projects then moved on to five, then we took another five. Currently, we have something like total of uh, about uh, nine road and highway projects, another four to five coal connectivity projects, and we continue to do, do uh, doing that. As a part of our business, we will be doing both PPP as well as EPC. Okay, and then one last question based on the uh, 
uh, you know, so as I understand, uh, international is uh, 9th and not large. Uh, right now, uh, the IMEC corridor, that is at a very conceptual stage. Uh, so the main growth driver would be railway capex and uh, you have small portion in infrastructure. So how do we use this company in terms of, you know, uh, on a medium term, let's say three to four year horizon from today from uh, uh, then, uh, what kind of growth one can expect? Would this be a 13 to 15 percent uh, kind of a growth company? Would it be lesser? How do we uh, use this? Yeah, so I think we mentioned it earlier also that uh, in the next four to five years, we see our doubling our turnover. Okay. And that is mainly uh, riding on the capex in, uh, uh, budgeted capex uh, in the railway sector. So, so it would be a mix of railway, roads and highways and uh, some related infrastructure activities that we may foray into. Uh, but uh, yeah, it would be driven mainly by railways, roads and highways. Because when you say doubling in four years is 18% Kagar. Yeah. So I am sure you would have worked it backwards. So four to five years, if I may use that word, uh, I mean we can't be that. Yeah, five right. years, then that would be about fourteen, fifteen percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is what right. we would. Uh, uh, that is what we would like to target. Yeah. And one last question: Is forty-five percent nominated, and demanding is uh, competitive bidding? If you can give us a flavor, which contracts, with some examples, uh, where you know those were nominated contracts, and which contracts were competitively bidded. Just to understand that in terms of future pipeline, what would be coming directly to us on nomination basis and what would be, uh, you know, bid around? Going forward, nothing will come to us on nomination. That practice has been stopped. Okay. Okay. So, whatever existing nomination business we have, it should get completed in the next two to three years. One of them being, let's say, a SEVOC project. USBRL, we are in the process of completing, so it should get completed in this year. And similarly, we will have some other uh, railway projects which were on nomination basis. Really, we have one nomination project internationally, which is the Myanmar project, which has been given to us by NEA. But uh, that is again an exception uh, which uh, has come to us. But typically, the way read as a rule would be uh, competitive basis. Any new rules would be on competitive basis. Sure, thank you. I will get back in the channel all the best. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohit Natarajan from Antique. Please go ahead. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, Ma'am, my first question is more to do with uh, what is IRCON doing as compared to competitors? Uh, for instance, I was on another call with RBNL. They were saying they are looking at orders. Uh, in fact, they have bid for a $10 billion trans Kalahari project in South Africa, $4 billion in Kyrgyzstan. Even a company like Wright, they are in discussion with a country like Chile to export Vande Bharat. Whereas IRCON, by design, was supposed to be an international uh, uh, railway execution agency as well. Uh, we have had a rich history of doing projects in the past in international countries like Sri Lanka. We were talking about Malaysia. Singapore 1 MDB, that particular high-speed rail contract. Uh, some, some, somewhere this international picture is nowhere to be seen in the discussion stage. Uh, where exactly is that disconnect? So, uh, you know, while I may not like to comment on what RBN and Rice are doing, but from Aircon perspective, yes, you are right. Uh, we were internationally very strong till about a couple of years back. So much so that we had most of our turnover coming from our international projects. And we continue to enjoy that credibility or that uh, respect that we have in those countries. Uh, in the past, the jobs that we got internationally were of two types. One, which were mainly funded through some kind of uh, government grant or MEA funding. Two, the projects which we negotiated on a one-to-one -one basis and managed to get uh, good returns there on. Uh, there have been changing scenarios all over the world. Uh, it is not that Epcon is not making efforts. We are making efforts. Right now we are doing it in our neighboring countries as well as in Middle East. But uh, having said that, uh, the window which is right now currently drying up 
is uh, where you know government of india or nea used to fund projects uh, that kind of projects are not coming as of now they may be coming in future and we are very much in touch with nea as far as one to one projects are concerned typically most of these countries when they talk of the large size projects are also looking for project financing Uh, it is not that they are sitting with this kind of finance and they just want you to come and execute. The project financing by itself is a difficult task if government of India is not a part of it. And therefore, when we are looking at international projects, uh, we are essentially trying to look at the projects where either they have already tied up the financing from somewhere and we are doing the EPC. or they are confident we'll be able to manage some kind of a structuring in which those kind of financing would be possible uh, uh, having said that yes we still need to work a lot on our international business our business development and marketing teams are looking into it so is our cmd but what is very important is to really understand that which are the projects which are tangible and which are actually on paper and which are the projects where we are looking at some kind of a memo you and not knowing when they are actually going to come ahead so uh, i think i'll leave at that point and uh, we will i think it would be best if we speak with our results as and when they happen sure this my second question is more to do with the domestic opportunities there was a time when all this network de bottlenecking electrification doubling all those orders came to you nomination but if you look at the national rail plan as such the scope of conventional works is very limited going ahead the capex is con- largely confined to high speed rail uh, rolling stocks and dedicated freight corridor where technically speaking uh, econ hasn't proved its credential probably uh, uh, a dedicated freight work could be an uh, exception both high speed and dedicated freight uh, corridor Aircon has the advantage. It's the only CPSC which has that credential. Uh, but ma'am, we haven't seen billing at. I mean, uh, yes, there is one particular tender that you may be doing in Gujarat uh, part. But when you look at the overall scheme of things, you will have to fight with the remaining players as such, private players. You will have to. The market share is dramatically reduced over there, even within the overall scope of things. So okay, yes, there are two things as you rightly pointed out. when we talk about national rail plan or uh, any of the railway capex uh, it is split between uh, what i may call as rolling stock and the areas which it corn may not be into and the areas where it corn is into which would include doubling tripling whatever of the lines having new lines modernization fnt work electrical work and then having semi high speed high speed kind of networks as well as uh, dedicated freight corridors so on the latter part i would say as of now whatever has been there the budget is easy uh, between 30 to 50% of the total it's not a low number so uh, i mean it is not that the cost of rolling stock has come these numbers are low in fact these are quite significant as far as competition is concerned yes there is a competition among serious players good players and that is what government of india wants and we are happy to participate in that competition and get the jobs the advantage with icon has been the one we have the credentials two we do a lot of work in house and we have that kind of requisite experience and the quality so uh, per se the market share is depleting as of now for icon in certain area but that's a very temporary phenomena because lot of players are coming in small ticket size jobs uh, where in um, some of them have been quoting numbers which are uh, uh, which, which are not even uh, covering the cost if one was to look at those sort of estimates but uh, we are fairly confident of our skills as well as the fact that we should be able to get some of these complex and reasonably sized jobs thank god sir and then finally when you come to the order inflow part uh we last time we said you have placed bids for 50000 crore projects as such and you were confident to win some 5000 crore kind of number but when you look at the execution we require to the gift bid for 50000 crore uh i didn't get you hello ma'am yeah any way please carry on with the question yeah ma'am my point here is the order inflow for this year this fiscal that is fy24 how uh, what is the realistic number one should be looking at and uh, And, and second, my second part of the question is: uh, Are we really going into the uh, uh, road projects 
with BOT toll model? Is that in our cards? So there are two things again. One, um, I did give a message in the last uh, con call, as well as uh, you know that we have been going low on our order secured or input, uh, and uh, that is something uh, which has uh, further come down from the estimate that we thought in Q2. Since date, I think we had order size that we secured in this year of currently about in the range of 500 crores, and since we are already sitting in mid February. And some of the big ticket jobs which we were anticipating should come this year are not likely to come because of various reasons. There could be political scenarios, there could be delay in decision making at some of these client ends. So I don't see this number going very, uh, very high in this financial year. Uh, but some of our efforts of this year should give us good results in next year in terms of orders. In terms of the BOT projects, see, we will continue to focus on road and highway projects. We will also be doing EPC as well as PPP projects. Uh, BOT specifically is something that we will be examining on a case-to-case -case basis. We have taken up two or three BOT projects in the past. So based on uh, how we see them, uh, we may be looking at them, whether on a standalone or on a JV basis. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. That's it for my side. Yeah. Ishpal, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of CA. Akash Dhanuka, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, in the last conference call, you had upgraded your, upgraded your guidance with respect to the revenue part to 15% over the, the last year, uh, which means that we'll have to achieve around 11,900 crores. And uh, that would mean that in Q4, we'll have to achieve 3, over 3,300 crores. Mm. Uh, so, are you on track to achieve that? Will we yeah. achieve that yeah. number? Yes. Okay. See, it could be a two, three hundred here or there, but we are there pretty much. So, I mean, 11,600 will touch for sure. Yeah, 11,500 okay. is something that we should be touching. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the other income part, ma'am, uh, uh, you also said that uh, we will be touching 550 crores. Uh -huh. And uh, till now we have touched 388 crores, which means in the Q4 we'll be touching, uh, we'll be needing 162 crores. Uh, and in this quarter we had only 127. So will we achieve that 550 crore number? So, uh, you know, in the other income part, uh, what is happening is uh, uh, at a consolidated level, as we mentioned, we started getting income from our uh, interest element in annuity of hand projects, mm -hmm. uh, which if you see is, has been a significant contributor in these nine months also. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so if we are at about a 500, 550 level, uh, yeah, we should be in the level of about 800 in March. Sorry, 800? 800. 500. You're already in the number of? Uh, 388. 388. So yeah. we should be in the range of 500. 500, 520. Okay, okay. And now with respect to the guidance for FY25, I mean, it's just touching 11,500 crores this year. Uh, if you can help us with the guidance for the next year, FY25. Next year. Sorry? FY25? Yes. Uh, yeah, that's the same. Yeah, so next year I think we should be, uh, see, given the current order book that I have, I would say uh, we would be at similar levels. I will be revising my judgment as and when I get more order in flow, if any. Okay, okay. Uh, with respect to the EBITDA part, ma'am, and I, 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 just give me a patient hearing on this, ma'am. In public interest, then there is a lot of confusion because of that harm and empty part. And why I'm saying this so is because a section of media for the past few quarters is quoting a figure of 7.4, whereas we have in our presentation quoted 12.6, and that is because of two difference, and which is because we are taking uh, the media is showing revenue from data from operational part only, whereas we are taking into account the other income and also the profit from the joint venture part. So this creates an anomaly, ma'am, and it uh, at the end. Uh, affect the share prices does the investors interest. So my request is if you can give the tax percentage instead of EBITDA percentage so that the, the it, it brings the clarity, ma'am. Uh, 
So I we, hope I have conveyed the it uh, correctly. Got your point. We got your point. Uh, I think we would be conveying pass percentage as well. If we are not, we will do that. Okay, so we'll do pass percentage as well. So if you can uh, help me with that, ma'am, for this year and the next year. So and in FY24. I have been, as far as in my phone calls, I've always been stating that the pass percentage will be in the range of seven to seven and a half. Okay, and uh, for the next year, ma'am. It remains the same. That percentage, I've been saying that we'll be maintaining at that level. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's it, ma'am, for my side, and uh, all the best for the future. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shreyans Mehta from Equus. Please go ahead. Oh uh, yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, ma'am, just wanted to understand, you know, uh, since we have a lot of JVs into relay connectivity, and I believe we were probably expecting them to be, you know, up and operational by 24 and the 25. So, is that, you know, on cards and how much uh, of that income, you know, will we see in the JV share of profit coming through? So, you know, in the coal connectivity projects, uh, 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 two of my JVs, part one, I mean, if I would call phasing of those projects, are already commercial. So in Chhattisgarh, I have phase one, which is already operational. And NCRL, uh, though of course we have now mentioned that it may be taken over by railways, again the phase one was operational, or I can say it's still operational. Now, uh, uh, in the Chhattisgarh project, where the phase one is operational, uh, there have been certain uh, losses, because the traffic has been little lesser than the, uh, than the overall expenses. Uh, again, uh, which, uh, you know, it just has been the first quarter where we had some good marginal profit. But otherwise, uh, ever since operations, there were certain losses. Uh, the rest of the projects, uh, which are right now under construction, uh, they should be ready completed by uh, some party by the end of this year and some by the end of next year. So the actual benefit of coal of connectivity projects should come two years from now. Got it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and any it takes some time for them to stabilize, you know, because uh, once you have these coal connectivity projects, uh, the coal companies have to have that kind of, uh, you know, I mean, uh, the, the fact that some of their traffic is already going by truck and they also need to have certain accessories and certain yards and linings and all in place. So there could be some mismatches. That's why I'm saying it should take two years for it all to stabilize. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Uh, Ma'am, in terms of your order and flows, you know, as as you mentioned that probably there were certain projects which we were targeting and are yet to be awarded. So, in terms of, you know, the projects which have been already been awarded, so is it fair to assume that uh, the, it is primarily because of competition or something else, you know, which we need to uh, introspect into? So, the couple of factors again. The first thing is uh, the big ticket complex orders that we were looking at, some of them are delayed. Uh, and, uh, you know, that is where our forte lies. Some of the projects where we uh, bid, uh, again, there were two categories. One where we were quite close to being L1, uh, but did not get it. Some were where you had something like 20 to 30 parties quoting, and um, uh, again, it's gone at a very indecently low price. So that is what I'm talking about, the domestic segment per se. And internationally, again, certain projects that we are trying, we are trying to get. Mm -hmm. uh, that is something which we are, uh, uh, we are trying to, uh, you know, I mean, uh, it takes time because as I told you, this is not coming through an NEA or a uh, you know, government grant route. So it's taking us some time to get those moving even on the international front. Certain projects which we have bidded, the results are still awaited. Now, given the kind of scenario right now in India, in terms of political, you know, the elections coming up, etc., there could be further delays in certain tenders or bits that we were targeting or certain results which we were targeting that they will come in this year. So, it's a mix of everything. Wow. Uh, it's not just competition, but yeah, it's a mix of everything. Got it, got it, sure. Yeah. And then in terms of clarification, you know, I mean, uh, when you mentioned that probably we expect to grow say at uh, see, uh, some 15%, 20% CAGR for next year and you know we need to double our revenues. 
if I just do a rough ballpark number, you know, calculation probably we need audience to tune out around 15,000, 20,000 on a yearly rented basis. So how confident are we, you know, in achieving that? So, you know, there's been a year when we moved from 26,000 crore to 41,000 crore. Right. Uh, in terms of order books. So, the confidence is there. But it is such a dynamic um, market where we are working in. And uh, as I also mentioned earlier, that there are a lot of these fly-by-the-night uh, players which at times uh, uh, trouble us or in fact some of these serious players. So, given all these factors, the confidence is there, the growth overall in infrastructure segment shall be there, both internationally as well as domestic. But on the other hand, uh, we want to be doing projects which are serious projects and where ultimately we are making profit. Uh, we don't want to increase our top line or the order book by knowing at stage zero external that it will be into a loss. So, given all these factors, as I mentioned, that is what we target. Uh, there could be some ups and downs, but overall from a five-year scenario, should be doable. Got it, got it. Ma'am, and in terms of investments, you know, what have we done till date, uh, if you could break up in uh, road SPVs and, you know, the other segments, and at the same time our cash on the book, our own cash? Our own cash on the book is about 700 to 750 crores. And in terms of the amount that we have already put in dairies and subsidiaries is about 2300 crores. We have another 1000 crores that we have to invest. And I think in this year we have done about 200 crores, 150 to 200 crores. So this 2300 also includes the road, right? Yeah, yeah. This is roads and uh, rail connectivity and renewable projects that we have. Right. Uh, just because I said 2300 odd crores is what we have invested and 1000 odd is what we need to do over next 2 to 3 years. Next 2 years, yeah. Next two years. Less than 2 years, yeah. Okay. And then last question from my side, in terms of, you know, the solar power project which we, which we are, you know, doing, what's the status of the healthy construction started and when will it be operational? So, I will ask my CFO to address this question since he's directly looking into this. Sure. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, currently, uh, uh, we have uh, acquired or uh, done the lean sheets for about 70% um, of the uh, total land requirement. Uh, we have uh, already started uh, constructing uh, four blocks uh, and uh, our uh, other assets like uh, pulling substation and transmission lines are under construction. Uh, we were targeting to partially commission the project uh, by 31st of March, but uh, there are some impediments which are there which needs to be sorted before it. And in any case, uh, we are uh, planning to complete the project by uh, September, October of 24. So that is the current status. And in terms of raw material, is the entire thing uh, procured or we are yet to procure it? Yeah, so uh, we have placed uh, the orders. Uh, for uh, all the uh, transmission equipments, uh, transformers and all the modules also. Entire order is placed and uh, we have already received uh, modules uh, for about uh, 50 megawatts also at the site and uh, uh, over the current month and the next month we do uh, hope to install uh, partially uh, some of these modules also and our target is to kind of partially commission uh, the project, uh, but uh, we uh, there are certain issues which are involving uh, uh, other uh, agencies uh, of uh, government of uh, Karnataka. Uh, we are uh, trying to get those permissions uh, so that we can partially commission. Uh, so that is the current status. And just to follow up on the same, so for, uh, just trying to understand, there's no raw material risk, you know, because you know largely the uh, this uh, project generally fails because of raw material. And second, these are back-to-back signed -back, uh, contracts, right? As in the PPAs are backed by the state government. We, we 100% procurement will, will be there, right? So, uh, 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 raw material, I assume that you are uh, referring to modules. Right, yeah, yeah, modules, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, we have already placed the orders. Uh, the, the supplies have already started. So, uh, we don't see, foresee any... Uh, uh, disruption on that account. 
Uh, as far as the uh, power evacuation and PPS, uh, we have already signed the PPA with the Indian Railways. So they will uh, buy whatever power is being generated. So that has already been tied up. Got it, got it. That's it from my side. Thank you and all the best. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Maheshwari from Skyridge Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is regarding the budget that, that was announced, 2.55 lakh crore for this year. Uh, can you give a dissection of uh, this amount, uh, how much of it is going to infrastructure work that we do, and all bulk of it is uh, being used for conversion of old trains to one day products? So, how much of it will be helpful for us, the kind of work that we do? Thank you. So, uh, you know, the, the budget split uh, is still not known of 2.55 lakh crores, but mainly they mentioned two things. One, of course, was the Vande Bharat coaches and the trains, and the second thing they mentioned was more connectivity projects to port and many other infrastructures. So, the second part, since it's been mentioned, especially as a part of the budget, I think it should have a significant share. And that is where we are already there. We are already doing some of the coal connectivity projects also. So once we also get to know, uh, we'll be looking at all those aspects. Okay. Uh, thank you for that, ma'am. Second question. So whenever, just for understanding say, whenever a budget is announced, uh, do you uh, have some clarity on hand before the announcement that, okay, these projects are in pipeline, these are going to happen in the coming year, or is it completely secretive to this? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we work like any other company does, so it is not that because we are a government company, uh, we get to know anything uh, before or just immediately after the budget. All of us will know it in the due course, as and when, uh, you know, Ministry of Railway works it out. Okay. Then lastly, uh, you know, uh, you are working on one high speed rail project for Ahmedabad, Mumbai. Uh, so, are there any more such projects in discussion, uh, even in discussion, or is it, uh, you know, first we will finish this project and then government will see if it is feasible to proceed with others? Okay, so uh, parallelly the discussions have started on some more high speed projects. Uh, I think at a DPR stage, uh, two projects are already being discussed. Uh, overall, uh, the government wants more of these projects, both semi-high speed as well as high speed. And in semi-high speed, like we have recently also done NCRTC electrification work. This is the Delhi Merit Corridor. So I think a mix of semi-high speed and high speed uh, from a long-term perspective is what uh, government would want uh, our country to have. So it is here to stay and grow in a big way. Uh, the details will be known to us as and when they are announced. But yeah, it, it is a promising area going forward. Uh, good to hear that. One last thing. Uh, when you, uh, if such projects are discussed, generally it's the conversion of existing lines into high speed lines or you have to completely look for a new land and new... No, no, no. This is a completely new project and it is based on Japanese technology. No, no, I mean ki, if when you want to lay down the railway lines for such high-speed trains, are the existing lines, you know, old lines converted to new lines oh, or no, you have to look? That's what I'm saying. It's a completely new, it, it's a greenfield setup of lines. Okay. So land acquisition must be a big challenge here. Yeah, so that's why you have a company, National High-Speed Rail Corporation Limited, which is doing these projects on a dedicated basis. So we are doing the part of the EPC work, but there is a company, there is a setup within government of India which does all this. It's, it's something similar to when you have metro setup. Understood, ma'am. Thank you so much and all the best. All right, thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Vishal Periwal from IDBA Capital. Please go ahead. <coughs> Uh, yeah, ma'am. Uh, thanks uh, for the opportunity. Uh, uh, in award, uh, ma'am, can you uh, clarify, like in railway sector, is there any data available that what was the total award uh, uh, for the sector as a whole in this year, last year, anything uh, that they can provide to Kandas? So, um, I think, uh, you're talking about uh, uh, Ministry of Railways awarding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yes, ma'am. Uh, no, I will not have that data with me because you know that data is uh, uh, it's uh, I mean every Roman railway will have their own set of data. Then there will be certain centralized projects. Also, uh, different departments, you know, civil, mechanical, electrical, will have their own set of. Uh, uh, um, at company level, I may not have that data. Okay. No, but uh, the capex number, which uh, generally it's uh, uh, shared in the public and everywhere, so so that is uh, combined of all the journal railways and everything, right? Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. And uh, 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 second, you mentioned there were uh, like 30 parties in one of the orders that was budget. So can you give some color, like where exactly this competition is? Is it uh, in the station development side or a traditional railway work of uh, laying lines? If you can just give some color. Okay, so this particular one that you're talking about, it is a railway project. Uh, it is not in station development, I think. Let me just look at this one. Uh, can you move ahead till I get back to sure. you? Because this sure. is a very specific question. Or we can sure. take it off the conference call also. Okay, okay. Something sure. I need to set out the data. Yeah. Right, right. And then uh, in terms of uh, uh, to get more orders for us, so uh, is there any sector that we are building up a team for us, uh, for ourselves, and then like, you know, we can get orders, anything uh, that you can provide a color? So, uh, yeah, internally, see, uh, as much as you all are, um, you know, anxious about it, uh, as company management, uh, we would be even more anxious about it and would be making all efforts towards this side because we understand that is something uh, which is important for us. So, while we are doing well on many of the strata uh, or the pillars that company has, this is the area where we have fallen short in this year and we need to get up. So, a lot of internal deliberations, activities, some, uh, you know, deliberations on how we are doing it and how should we be going ahead and what should be the identified team, all that is happening. So, uh, but, but, you know, I mean, again, uh, that's something which, uh, uh, I mean, I would rather have the results speak for it rather than get into that deliberation. As regards your previous question, this was a construction of roadbed, major and minor bridges, ROBs, RUBs, etc., etc., in the state of Maharashtra for Central Railway. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, those okay. kind of projects you are getting bidders in the range of about 15 to about 28, 30 or so. Right. So, is this like the norms are being relaxed uh, or, or any changes which has happened or? Uh, uh, or it's so, a, I think. so, you know, as we mentioned, these are typically projects which are being taken by rural railways. The project size is of a smaller scale and, and, and it also has uh, a lot of routine work, the normal bridges, the normal ROVs, etc. So, the credentials and the EQC requirements are also not as stringent as they should be. And uh, typically, the size could be anywhere between 300 to about 600-700 crores. So, uh, more people do get to participate, including some of the local parties. Okay. And then uh, in terms of uh, awards only, uh, sorry, I think I'm uh, asking that uh, uh, repetitive, kind, uh, repetitive kind of question. So, uh, uh, can you give some color uh, what could be the total bidded project that we have right now, what it could be like maybe six months before how it was, and any bid pipeline, is it becoming more uh, promising to you or... So, what I can tell you is that as of now, there are 5,000 crore worth of projects for which we have bid, but the results are awaited. And we are bidding for another 3,000 crores. So, about, and in the past, we have already bid for about 15 to 18,000 crores in the cumulative nine month period. Right. So, uh, incrementing this uh, uh, nine month period, that awards uh, in terms of actual results are out. Incrementally, what we have is 3,000 plus 5,000 that you mentioned. 
So 3000 will be bidding and 15000 the results are awaited. Awaited, okay, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And, and last thing from my side, uh, uh, if, if, uh, if it is covered, uh, pardon me, so I'm, uh, in terms of revenue, uh, we did mention like, you know, 11,500 crore that we are targeting for FI24, is it? Yeah. Right. So that is on a standalone ETC work, uh, typically that's uh, the number that is being shared. No, no, no. We talk everything on a control basis. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, but then, uh, uh, if, I don't know, I mean, like, you know, uh, fourth quarter number, if we just imply, then uh, is it like you're seeing things to be little uh, kind of subdued or uh, because the implied number looks to be yeah. little... Yeah, so, you know, what has happened is, uh, I mean, the reason I'm giving this is, again, because I'm fairly confident that this is something I'll do. But if there is an upside, I'll also be as happy as you are because you're sitting in mid of bed. And I've had some of my projects which have been affected uh, geopolitically. Like Myanmar project, there have been some political disturbances, insurgencies, because of my work has temporarily been stopped almost. And uh, similarly in Sivok, we were all aware that there were certain issues in the month of October, November, after which a lot of our resources were pulled in uh, and given to NHAI to get the roads, etc. back. Our own work was told to be stopped because the national priority was to get the road back in place. And even those roads right now are working on a very temporary basis, only for the army, trucks, etc. So even our own stuff cannot go up and down from those roads. So these are things because we are working in uh, some tougher terrain. So these projects, especially Sevox is an important project for me in this year for my revenue. So it this may take it did take a toll in my October to December quarter and I see that happening till March because we're already in Feb and these activities are not picking up in this year. Okay, but but uh, if I look at your quarter three numbers, I think uh, double digit double digit growth that we have shown. So maybe there are certain projects which are compensating for that. So yeah, can we expect the same continuing in quarter four also or? Uh, yeah, that is the reason I'm saying the overall number would be in the range of about 11,500 plus. But uh, uh, yeah, that is the reason. That, that is how it's been doing, and hopefully it will continue. But we should be there. Okay, sure, ma'am, sure. Uh, thanks uh, for answering all the questions. Thank you very much. All right, take care. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ayush Agarwal, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, please. Uh, right. So, then I was looking at the uh, numbers reported this year, this, uh, this quarter, and uh, when we look at the consolidated versus standalone for uh, December uh, 2023, I noticed that the standalone number for uh, December 2023 has uh, dropped compared to uh, December 2022, while the consolidated number has increased. Uh, can you share some more information on how the, how I just mentioned that on a standalone basis, uh, some of my projects were uh, had a drop. Like I just give an example of Sivok and Myanmar, right. uh, both domestic as well as international. So uh, on standalone, all those have taken a toll on my uh, results. If you were to see it vis a the previous quarter, but on a consolidated basis, I have two of my hand projects which are fully operational, and I've started getting annuity incomes from them. Also, there have been some dividend inflows because of my joint ventures and subsidiaries. So, given all this, consolidated, I'm making it up, but on a standalone, I've taken that hit. Right. And uh, when we talk about uh, these auctions that you are being outfit by other players, and you've mentioned a couple of times that uh, these uh, other players are uh, bidding ridiculous numbers, which uh, don't even cover the cost of the of the of the bid, like of the project, then uh, uh, can you give us some more information on why it couldn't be a case of uh, less operational efficiency on your part? Sorry? I'm saying that if other yeah. companies are outbidding you in an auction, mm. and uh, you're saying that uh, the, the, the offers that they are making, the numbers are uh, very bad, like it's not possible to even cover the cost of the project. Mm. Then could you give us a reason why, uh, why, it, or rather like some information on why this could be down to a more efficient operations from your competition? 
And also, you know, all the serious players, the ones who have been in the industry and who are of our kind of size and credibility, they are also not getting those jobs. So I also mentioned that these are players who you would not have heard of and are taking the bits. So please correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I have uh, I have read that many times uh, the government uh, puts in certain criteria on who can be qualified better for these projects. So on that basis, I would assume that these players whom no one has even heard of, they wouldn't actually you know qualify for such bids. So you don't know what. Again, there, as I mentioned, there are a couple of reasons. So, in certain projects where the project size is low or the uh, low or the uh, the EQC criteria is such that some of these are very relaxed criteria, where you have such kind of players who are coming and quoting ridiculously low, and probably they would not be the players you would have heard of earlier as your serious long time competitors. So that is one part which I mentioned. And I said that is where, you know, if there are 15, 16 players, we would not even be L1, L2, L3. So, that, there is that class of uh, orders which are happening right now, in which we don't see ourselves standing a chance because of the kind of players who are coming, probably either they don't understand the business or uh, they are trying to enter into the market by quoting low. So, that's something which I will not be able to comment upon, but... Long term CS players are not the ones who are winning this bit. But on the other hand, there is a category of projects where the competition is good, the EQC is well laid out, where we may not have won the job, but we may have been an L2 or an L3. So that's another class of uh, history that we had recently. And third are certain projects where the tenders were expected to come out. Those are fairly complex or large size projects. But either they have not come out or if they came out and they have been rescheduled or retendered. And that is where uh, we see ourselves picking up a recent uh, good pile. So it's all the three categories. But the category that you've been asking the question on, uh, the fact is that yes, see, uh, there are many players, especially local players. And if the local uh, uh, zonal railways is taking it out, uh, you will have some many, many players in that city or in that zone who do civil work. And uh, you may see them doing the civil construction work and similar activities for railways as well when such tenders come out. So this bit, the idea is to see if they'll be able to perform at that price. So, uh, so when, you, when you say that uh, because of these uh, projects getting delayed because of elections and uh, environmental reasons and stuff, does that mean there will be a Spurt in a particular year, or does that mean it will be a long-term uh, increase year over year for uh, these new projects which were delayed? So, uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, uh, as of now, going forward for the next few months, we expect there to be a lull, and uh, whatever projects we are already looking at, we should be looking them coming um, after a few months. And then from there on onwards, it should become a regular feature. So this should be a short to a midterm issue right now. Okay. My last question is regarding uh, your EPC and uh, uh, pro modernization projects like the Japanese uh, rail project that you are working on. Uh, I wanted to know, uh, as a business, uh, how much of R&D is a part of your uh, business strategy or do you generally rely on uh, other parties to create technology and then you implement it in your project? So the high-speed project has been taken by Government of India based on JICA loan, loan on Japanese technology only. So there is no R&D or technology improvement that India is doing from their side. It's a well-established technology in Japan and which is being imported into India and that is how the high-speed is being set up. So we are doing it on a project uh, technology as well as guidance from Japanese companies and uh, whosoever are associated in Japan for this project. Right. What I actually meant was, how does this, uh, you know, affect your, uh, you know, the technologies that you can offer in your bids for other projects, you know, even in the conventional land? Technology in our kind of job, uh, uh, it is owner-driven. 
वॉट वी डू इज एन ईपीसी ईपीसी में आर एंड डी एंड टेक्नोलॉजी बहुत सिग्निफिकेंट पार्ट नहीं है वेर एवर इट इज डन इट इज टेकन विद दी हेल्प ऑफ अवर दिस थिंग बट पर से इट इट इज नॉट अ क्रिटिकल फैक्टर फॉर आर काइंड ऑफ बिजनेस थैंक यू थैंक यू The next question is from the line of C A Akash Danuka, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the follow up, ma'am. Uh, with the with respect to the PAC uh, again, ma'am, uh, we were 8.12 in this current quarter and 8 in the uh, previous quarter. So, are we little conservative on guiding on seven seven and a half? No, we are not. Uh, it really depends on the kind of uh, you know uh, where we are in the project cycle. Uh, because uh, when I'm talking of a patch number, we have a 7.61 for the nine months, right. and we had 7.49 for the previous year nine months, and we had for FY23 7.12. So I am talking the same range. Uh, okay. I don't know where you're talking 8.61. Okay, so the uh, and the quarter to quarter, so quarter to quarter really in a kind of project that we are. It could really vary. So, uh, uh, just correct me if I'm wrong on the conclusion part that we will touch uh, 11,500 crores on the operational revenue, 500 crores on the other income part, which brings us to 12,000 and uh, 12,000 crores, and on that we will be earning 7.5 percent, right? Which amounts to a patch of 900 crores. 7 to 7.5. And it could be the overall revenue could be in the range of 11,000 to 11,900. Correct. So, I mean, as of now, we have achieved the patch of uh, 682 crores. So, can we assume uh, another, uh, let's say, what, 275 yes, crores? Sure you can do, please. I'm confirming again and again the same, please. Okay, okay yeah. thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Niket Jadav. From Purnartha Investment Advisors, please go ahead. Um, hello, ma'am. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, if I'm not wrong, out of the eight road projects that we have, uh, two are completed. So, uh, could you provide a breakdown of how much income goes to, uh, from the ham model goes to operating and how much goes to other income? So, uh, you know, out of the four projects that are operational right now. My, there are two are hand projects. Right. So out of the two hand projects that I have, uh, my uh, uh, interest income that I earn from them is roughly uh, 130 odd crores. Yeah, 140 crores. 140 crores. Okay, thank you, ma'am. All right. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rupali, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Am I open? Yes, please. Yeah, hello. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, can you please uh, give us a flavor of uh, contribution of roadways, uh, sorry, roads, highways, and uh, railway projects in your total order book for FY25? I get 15%? Yeah. So, uh, so uh, I think uh, roads and highways were about 15 to 20 percent. 15 percent. Yeah, so about 6,000 crore is highways mm -hmm. out of 30,000 crore. And about 2,000 crore is others and balance about 21,000 is available. Okay. Okay. Order book. Okay, order book, no? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, one more thing. Uh, does this order book include the overseas projects as well? Yeah. Domestic as well as international. Okay. International means which countries you are? So we have Myanmar project. We are doing some works in um, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bangladesh. So, uh, uh, some of them are under, I mean, they're at the tag end of almost getting close, and in Algeria. Okay, understood. Thank you. Thank you. 
The next question is from the line of Shreyans Mehta from Equalis. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the follow-up opportunity. Ma'am, my question pertains uh, pertains to our standalone core EBITDA margins, excluding of other income. So it seems to have you know been setting at say closer to six six and a half or percent since last three four quarters. So assuming you know that we are expecting a fifteen percent growth year over year. So can we expect you know that uh, margins are stabilized sure and you know once we scale up, then economies of scale can play out and this margins can actually go upwards of say seven seven and a half. Uh, no, no. It, it's not about the economies of scale. It is about the competition and the fact that uh, uh, the jobs are going at very, very thin and competitive margins. So the very fact that we will be able to protect them uh, by itself uh, and also continue to get good size of order book is 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 the balancing that we will be doing, and uh, we uh, we hope to continue doing that. From a small to mid-term perspective, it is not expected to go up the margins. And at least, you know, few yeah, percentage yeah. declines, yeah, few basis points. Yeah. So at least, you know, it is stabilized here at say six, six and a half the core EBITDA margins, or there is a scope of further going down. So given our order book that we have right now and the margins therein, we hope to be there. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, having said that, uh, now we have to start securing more orders and. The market is getting intense day by day. So, from a next one to two year perspective, it should be there. But going forward, uh, I mean, I'll only be able to tell as and when we pick up those orders. Got it, ma'am. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Kumar. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Niket Chadha from Purnasa Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for your follow-up question. Uh, so I had a question about our profits from associates and joint ventures. So if we compare the nine months of FY23 to the current nine months of FY24, there's a jump from 18 crores to about 60 crores. So could you tell me what is driving this uh, increase in the uh, profit? Yeah. So there are two things. One. Uh one, as I told you, that my two hand projects are now fully operational, and therefore they're giving me a significant contribution to my PBT. Second, uh, in one of my sole projects, CERL Phase One, I had losses uh, till about last uh, quarter, and the losses were significant. While this quarter, it has given me a profit. So okay. these are the two main reasons for this increase. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you may press star and 1. To ask a question, ladies and gentlemen, you may please press star and 1. Participants who wish to ask questions may press star and one at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, we have no further questions. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for their closing comments. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much for moderating the call, uh, Mr. Dorwin. I would also like to thank all our shareholders, business partners, analysts, investor friends, and the overall stakeholder community who have shown continuous faith on us and supported us throughout the journey. Uh, we assure you that uh, we will continue to strive towards greater health and are doing all our efforts as management to uh, carry on with this growth journey of ours. Uh, we would be happy to connect with you on one-to-one basis for any other further queries that you would have and take it forward. I conclude today's con call and thank you once again for your participation. Thank you, everyone, and uh, good evening. Thank you. Thank you all for being a part of the conference call. If you need any further information or clarification, please email at sachin.garg at ircon.org. That is S A C H I N dot G A R G at the rate I R C O N dot O R G.
Thank you everyone for joining this call. You may now disconnect your lines.